Hello, Rob. Got more books and beer. Look at it flow, brother. Look at it flow very well. Oh no, brother. It's coming up. It's a billowous cloud, brother. Orange soda. Pour in there, brother. Oh no, brother. Listen, bruvs, if you're going to have pumpkin beer and you want it to taste like pumpkin and beer, this is probably your beer, Screaming Pumpkin. It's not my favorite, but it's one of the few available in the Samuel Adams uh, Jack Off, whatever it's called, Jack Off, Jacko the hell's it called whatever it's jerk off pumpkin absolutely horrendous i've had it too many times to I hate myself more than i do karen reistroffer um these first three books are all for the mylar jackets they will replace something roses for mama out of the blue down oil. All for that. All right, ghost story. I have a copy of this book in hardcover, but that I've never read and never will read. But this is a great mass market paperback. Cover with the haunted house. Focus, buddy. Focus. Yeah. Superb horror. Frightening. Enough to jolt the most jaded ghost story addict. Everyone has been afraid sometime. Everyone has felt fear close. Everyone has felt fear close. The fuck does that mean? Felt fear close a cold hand. Is there a comma there that I just don't see? Felt fear close a hand around the heart. Oh, close, you dumb son of a bitch. Took one sip of beer and I'm already drunk. Everyone has felt fear close a cold hand around the heart. Tug at the scalp and send the blood racing wildly. Everyone has been afraid, but none so afraid as the terror-stricken men and women of Milburn. Called by a supernatural force to answer for a supernatural sin. Sentenced in the evil heart of darkness to live out a ghost story. It's a very uh, jizzy font, I might say. Must say. Will say. Look at that foam scud. This one's definitely better than it was yesterday. The Ruins by Lisa Peschel. Oh, what the fuck? Is this the same book? Oh, Jesus. It's the same book, just different editions. Like that would have stopped me from buying it anyway. I don't know who donated this book. Or any number of books. At this thrift store today. But there were a bunch of books on magic and the tarot ruins uh, ruins 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 obviously the gilded tarot companion by barbara moore this book's not in very good shape but i got it now if i could ever get a goth girl assistant to help me on this newspaper It'd free up a lot of time for me to do fucking other stuff I want to do but I mean nobody reads this goddamn newspaper but I feel obligated to keep doing it the gilded tarot earth air 
Fire and Woot to More Techniques of Natural Magic by Scott Cunningham. Obviously, it's a Lou Allen book. Earth Lore. Middle Bell Road. I know where that is. That place is still open. Create wondrous transformations. Water. Water smooth stone the wind. Shut up. I know. I collect more books. What's this then? Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office. Well, that's so much that. And plate number 006. Wicca for men. Looks like uh, Mr. Warlock here had some problems. The old religion. Truth is, there was no old religion. I mean, there were old religions, but... Then again, it could be talking about paganism. Don't know. Here's some real paganism. Revelation Revealed, verse by verse, by Jack Van Impey. <clears throat> I've probably told the story on three or four different versions of this podcast that I once sent a letter to Jack Van Impey, and he read it on the air, much to my delight. And then he prayed for me, which was brilliant. I didn't write the letter in a mocking way. So I actually respect the guy because he talked about the New World Order. Philip K. Dick, the man in the high casket. Castle. Castle casket. Oh, nice tear to the back. That one's unsellable. I think you know who Philip K. Dick is if you don't. Whatever. The Dreamer's Journal by Barbara Moore. Hey, wasn't the other book by Barbara Moore too? Yeah. The Gilded Tarot. What's this book? Waterlogged or is that just how it looks? I think the front cover is waterlogged. I was hoping there's some tarot cards in here that were accidentally left or nude photos of goth chicks but there ain't shit in there anyway if I ever do that kind of shit I will consult these books this beard actually is not bad first one I drank yesterday was a little bit bothersome Michigan Chillers kids the horror books I don't think they're really horror. They're just foolish stories. Special five-year anniversary edition. I don't know how much money this guy's made off these books, but it seems to be a lot. He just keeps writing them. Jonathan Rand. wonder if he's got ghostwriters now just writing this shit. Don't know. The Torrents of Spring by Ernest Hemingway. First published in 1926, The Torrents of Spring is an, am is an amusing parody of the Chicago School of Literature, to which Sherwood Anderson subscribed, poking fun at the great race of writers. And it depicts a vogue that Hemingway's Hemingway himself refused to follow. According to the New York Times... The Torrents of Spring reveals Mr. Hemingway's gift for high-spirited nonsense. Originally, looking at the cover, which is basically blank, save for the words. I thought it was a first edition, but considering I've never seen the book in any version... It is what it is. Tis what it is. I believe it's 1997, 87. 87. Ad infinitum. 
a biography of Latin. Latin. I mean, there was one picture. I was like, I was on the fence with this book, but then I saw this one little illustration. I was like, there's no way I can leave this goddamn book behind. Where is it? Wasn't that one? It was later in the book. I mean, imagine being, oh, there, there we go. Look at that shit. Imagine drawing this shit in 1542. Actually, that's in the 1000s. So, yeah. I once tried to learn how, learn how to speak Latin, but then I just thought, what the fuck am I going to talk to? American Folklore and Legends. Some decent illustrations in here. Jack, Mag Joe Magarak, Mystery Man of Steel. Johnny Appleseed's Secret. The Daring Deed of Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys. Crispus Attucks, American Hero. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything new in here. Since I haven't read my other books on folklore, save for a few I've delved into. This book, Sirens of Chrome, the, Enduria, the, the Enduring Allure of Auto Show Models by... Marjorie Krevsky. And I didn't get it because I liked auto show babes, considering I refused to go to the auto show, even though I've been invited to go numerous times. Don't like the concept of an auto show. I'm not sure quite why. But something in me was hoping that there would be a Haroon in here, which I highly doubt. I don't know if this book's worth any money or not, but look at these. She's cute. Nice pecs, bro. Let's rumble. Now that's brilliant. That right there is brilliant. Damsels of the Dance. Packard Motor listed members of the Marion Morgan Dancers to promote the 1970, 1970, 1927 model Packard. 343 Series 8. The troupe danced around the United States at auto events. And in London in vacant and variety shows specializing in interpretive Greek movement. It's actually quite brilliant. What the fuck are these flapper girls on cars? Maybe there will be a Haroon. It'd be great if there was. Anyway, this is the Moza City. So, Victoria's Dot Daughters. I'm guessing it's Queen Victoria. I mean, I looked at it and I'm pretty sure it said Queen Victoria. Yeah, Queen Victoria and her daughters. I didn't know she had kids. I just figured she was a lesbian. To stir a magic cauldron, a witch's guide to casting and conjuring. What's this shit with a white cat? Preface, lifting the veil. Voice of experience. No witch nudies again. This book's pretty roughed up, but... Now I have something to look at. 
if I need to reference witches for my Gundela research. Spell it out. The curious, enthralling, and extraordinary story of English spelling. Which I picked up at the Plymouth Library where the ladies who were putting out books were sniffling and well, at least they weren't sneezing or coughing to their uh, credit, but they were sniffing, and I'm like, bitches, I get sick. I'm a fucking, well, there ain't much I can do. My story of Charles Manson, life inside his cult in the darkness that ended the 60s. Diana Lake, member of the family. At 14, I became one of Charles Manson's girls. At 17, I helped put him in prison. This is my story. since I'm now officially collecting true crime, even though I just sold five that were listed. I have it, and I will give it to me mother to peruse, and she'll say, there's too much stuff about sex, which is probably not wrong. Detroit Police Department, of which my uncle was a mounted horseman. There he is, a horse right there, buddy. Great police department was pretty much the worst Keystone cop department back in the 20s and previous to that. Some call him Pig. <laughs> what the fuck is this? He's saving your kid's life. Some call him Pig. Yeah, so it's about my 36th book of this Images of America series. There's Dallas. There's some clippings in there, which are cool. Plan to sell this, since it's worth about 12 to 15 bucks. Of which I'll make about five off after fucking shipping and fees. The After Midnight Ghost Book. Pretty much bought this one. Sight. Unseen. Who's in there? Robert Nye, Agnes Short, Paul Weldon, Faye Weldon, sorry, Peter Dickinson, Catherine Talbot, Peter Tinniswood. Never heard of any of these people. This is what I'm getting at. Janice Elliott, Karen Prendon, Prend, 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 Prendeville, Prendeville. Never heard of any of these mothers. What year is it? 1981. All right, so there's some ghost stories. More ghost stories. I don't know how anybody ever gets bored. So much shit to do, and I'll never get to do it. I have a fucking edge before I croak. Well, I guess that's it. No, 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 Bubba. No, Bubba. Yeah, don't look at all these books on the floor that I've still not processed. Oh. I found this receipt for Danny's Foods, which was a local grocery store. Which competed with the likes of Farmer Jack's, Kroger. Well, not Kroger. Kroger's still around. I guess it did compete against Kroger. Kroger, Chatham, Great Scott, Danny's. What other stores were there? Oh, um, Wrigley's. Although I don't remember Wrigley. Anyway, any wise. Anyways, those were the big ones. AMP, which Farmer Jack's, yeah, I guess those two emerged, didn't they? There's also AMP. That was fine, found in a Bible. This I found in another book about, what's it called? Abused Children. So I grabbed it. And then this one. Pat Robertson's America's Date with Destiny, which I don't know what it's about. 
possibly the New World Order. Biblical truth in the shapes and the charters of our original colonies. That's true. Anyway. Big thing about this book. I think this is just basically the formation of our country. Which was founded as a Christian country. Despite what these fucking dullards will tell you. And trust me, I'm not a Christian. But, facts is facts, dog. Anyway, this is the real appeal of this book. After I saw this sticking out of one an, another book, a few, a few books away from this book, I picked this one up to see if there was anything in it. And what do I see? Not for sale. Wayne County Office on Aging. With a phone number. Said Wayne County Office of Aging was located in inside the K beer the K beard. Jesus Christ. Basically drunk on one beer. I guess I should have ate dinner instead of waiting until ten o'clock. Um the K beard I can't say it, K Beard building, which is the last remaining Structure, well, not structure, but the hospital building of Eloise. There is still a fire fire station on the premises, and I believe parts of the bakery, the remnants of whatever's left of the bakery, and some other fucking bullshit. Anyway, Frank Rembitz, Biz Rembitz, I don't know how to say his last name, some Polish name, I think. He was the director of the Wayne County Office on Aging, and he was the one who also started collecting artifacts from the premises and put them in a showcase of what amounted to the earliest version of the Eloise Museum. It's now housed as part of the Westland Historical Society. But... Originally, it was housed inside the K. Beard building inside uh, showcases. I'm sure people were stealing stuff, and that's probably what forced them to move to a new location. But yeah, I don't know why this was part of that office on aging. I don't know if they had a library or what, or if they sold stuff, since it said not for sale, which makes me believe they were selling books, books of some sort. Some sort. Otherwise, why would you say not for sale? Unless they had a big garage sale. Anyway, that's that. So now I have another Eloise Nankin Township piece of ephemera.